All right, let's, here's a graph, and from the graph we need to fill in all this information over here on the left, and then also we need to write the equation of the, ration, of the rational function. So we're going to go backwards from what we know. Let's go ahead and fill in all the information. The whole, you can see, is at 1, I'm sorry, 2 comma 1. That's my hole right there. So write 2 comma 1. The x-intercept, there's none because it's a horizontal asymptote, so we'll write x equals 0, which is, I'm sorry, not x equals 0, y equals 0, which is this line, the x, the x, the x axis is y equals 0. Um, the, verti the vertical asymptote, well, let's do the y-intercept. The y-intercept is 0, 3. It's that point right there, 0, 3. And the vertical asymptote is x equals negative 1. And there is no slash um, slide asymptote. So let's turn this information backward into an, an equation. I'm going to color code this so you can see what I'm doing. To find the whole means that the means that uh, whoops not that one means that two x minus two the x value of two represents the factor of x minus 2 and we know that x minus 2 has to be on the top and the bottom in order for there to be a hole. Alright, so that's the first thing. Um, let me do this because there's my, my equation is going to be like this, y equals and we'll color code everything else. So that's how you know where your where your hole is. And there's one other little thing that we got to go back to. We got to make sure that when we cancel those out and we plug in two, we get one for y. Um, since there's no x-intercepts right here, there's no more there's no more factors on the top with an x in it, so we don't have to worry about that. The y-intercept of zero comma three, we're going to have to go back and check this in a second. It's going to relate to that up there. Let's do the things that we know for sure, and what we know for sure is. The vertical asymptote of negative 1 means that x plus 1 has to be on the bottom. The horizontal asymptote of y equals 0 happens when the degree of the bottom, degree of the bottom, uh, called the degree of the denominator, is greater than the degree of the numerator, which it is right now. So that part of it is taken care of. So the only thing we have to do is figure out, well, what else do I have to do to this to make the y-intercept 3 and the um, that number 1? And a lot of times you just go ahead and throw a 3 up here because you know these are going to cancel out. And if, the, if those cancel out, then whatever number was on the top, because if you plug in 0 for x, because that's how you find your y-intercept right there, plugging in zero. Then, then this has to equal three. So what has to be up at the top? Three. A three. So let's see if that works. When I do that, let's see if that works for two comma one. When I plug in two, notice I can't plug in two to the red because that would give me zero over zero. So when I plug in two here instead of zero, will I get one? For y, and the answer is yes. Two plus one is three. Three over three is one. So there's your answer. So let's clean this up. Your answer is going to be y equals three times x minus two all over. Um, you can actually, to be honest, you might want to just factor this or distribute this out, foil it out. So that would be x squared minus x minus two. That's the way this problem would have looked in the book. It wouldn't have been in this factored form. You could write it in the factored form, it's fine, but that's the way it would have looked in the book originally, so that might be the answer. If it was a multiple choice test, for instance, that might be the answer, and you'd have to go all the way back to find that.